say my I sound down just because, well, one, I just woke up, and two, my morale is just a little low. I'm just really wanting to to get started with work, you know. No. <laughs> this is your last <laughs> trip there, right, Stephen? Correct. That That is correct. I don't have anything else planned back over here. Um, I mean, I have to say the work here I do is really fulfilling, and I love doing it. You know, we're... We're here helping to set the wheels in motion for sending um, our people home and and giving the Iraqis the the tools they need to stand on their own two feet. So the work I'm doing is extremely satisfying. Um, and I know once we get to where we're going and start working and getting things done, I'm going to feel much, much better about being here. But like I said, we, we had a... We actually had a flight scheduled late last night, um, and we stayed up waiting. I've actually only gotten four hours of sleep because we stayed up till midnight waiting to see if the flight was going to leave, and they canceled it at midnight. So that was when I got into bed, and then the alarm went off at 4.30. <laughs> so um, I got up to make the phone call, and, and I guess I'm still a little bummed about missing that flight. So, But we're going to try again here. Uh, sometime today, um, and hopefully, you know, we're, everybody think good thoughts, and everybody send me some positive energy that the weather is going to clear up and we'll get on a flight. Oh, and, and I'm, I'm sorry if you already said this, Stephen, but where are you going from here? Uh, I'm just to another base in Iraq. Just just somewhere else. He can't and say. You're, you're treating yourself to something <laughs> special when you're done, though, right? Oh, yes, yes, that is true. So, again, some news I got last night was that because of all the delays, we have to extend our trip in Iraq for a week. So I had a vacation planned in Amsterdam and then to London, um, but now it all has to be (laughs) great. I have to change all my tickets and see about um, changing my vacation because – now that we have to spend an extra week here, that whole trip has is going to change. But no dates have been set yet, so I can't even change my ticket yet. So your date your date for coming home before was May twenty fifth. So now that's not when you'll be back. My date for my my date for leaving Iraq was going to be May sixteenth, I believe. Somewhere around the sixteenth or seventeenth was when I was going to leave the country and head to Amsterdam, and then I was going to be in Amsterdam and. London. I was going to go back and forth until the 25th. So now I'm here until the 25th, and on the 25th is when I'll leave to go to Amsterdam and spend my week in Amsterdam and London. I'm going to go fly to Amsterdam, spend four days there, then I'm going to fly to London and spend four days there, and then fly home. Wow. Steven. So yeah, that's my little treat, you know. My I cheated myself to to the the um, the trip home, um, you know, having a little vacation after living in a tent for a month. <laughs> and found a phone. <laughs> Still found a phone in a tent. Okay. <laughs> well, that's something I'm going to look forward to. I would have tried to call you guys from my cell phone, but um, the cell phone service is so hit and miss. Some days it'll be great. You can get on your phone and talk away, and then the next day you won't even get a minute in, and it just cuts out. Wow. So um, you you originally had planned, and I this reminded me of it because Sam said something in the chat. You originally planned the Amsterdam trip to be like a birthday present to yourself because your birthday is right around then, correct? That's correct. My birthday is May 24th. Um, which is Sunday, May the 24th, but now it looks like I'm going to be traveling that day. Like, I'll be in airplanes most of the day, um, which is kind of a bummer, because, yeah, originally I would, I would, Sunday would have been um, my last day in London, because I was going to get on an airplane Monday to come home, so I was going to be partying it up Sunday night, but now I'll be drinking tiny bottles of booze on an airplane. Getting wasted. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, you, may, who knows? Maybe you can call us from London and Amsterdam. And <laughs> I'd love to. At the very I, least, I'm going to be posting tons of pictures. Oh, that would be great. That would I be saw some cool. pictures you had posted of uh, you were having, what, Taco Bell in Iraq? Yes. There's a Taco Bell <laughs> here on base, and we... Um, they sell hats and, and shirts, like an actual, the same shirts that the employees wear, the Taco Bell hat and the Taco Bell shirt. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody asked in chat before, I forget who it was, they wanted to know how the food was in Iraq. Oh, the food's actually really good. We eat, we eat at the military DFAC, which is like the um, dining facility. And the food is actually great. I mean, it's it's, it's like cafeteria style. It's all you can eat. Um, I've been trying to, last trip I ate a lot more than I should. This trip I've been trying to eat healthy. So they have like grilled chicken and rice and vegetables. And they have a huge dessert tray and every, like just any kind of soft drink you can imagine, um, milk and juice and a salad bar. And it's really amazing how much, how great the food is in the selection. Uh, and it's all you can eat. So you walk in there and you literally just eat to your heart's content. That's, somebody, what did somebody say? Do they use a curry a lot? A curry? <laughs> no, no, it's all American food. I, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I mean, I know a lot of people like kind of think, oh, what it must like be be like, you know, how crazy and stuff. But for the most part, um, I mean, we're on American, or, you know, coalition force bases, so it's totally, um, you know, Americanized, and it's, you know, the Amer the, where you eat is you know all Americanized, and like I said, they have Taco Bells and or a Taco Bell, but um. You know. Do you do you get to I don't know again I don't really know but do you get to interact with any locals at all? Not really. Um, uh, I do get to um, as part of the job. Like I said, I do work for the Iraqi Air Force. We do get to do. Um, we have Iraqi colonels that hang that actually we spend time with um, consulting with, and so they're they're you know high level Air Force colonels, and uh, we spend a lot of time with them, so we get to know them very well. It's amazing the stories we hear, because um, most of them, you know, were here when Saddam was in um, in charge, and they were in the military during his time, and they have lots of stories about, you know, the way things were, <clears throat> and how, you know, kind of how things went, and um, it's really, really fascinating um, to, to hear the stories they have to tell. But I these bet. Are also the people that I have, these are also the people that I have to completely um, hide things from, too, if you know what I mean. Yeah, <clears throat> Stephen, I read your blog, and I just want you to come home. <laughs> you know, it's it's. I knew about this agreement before I ever came over here. That the the agreement about um, you know contractors and civilian personnel. I knew about the agreement, and then I fell under the laws and so forth. But I think until that night, I, I didn't, until, you know, my boss stopped the conversation from happening and everything. I think that was the first time I really got scared and nervous. I was like, you know, what if someone had said something? What if, you know, you know, these guys heard it, and then all of a sudden, you know, even though they seem to be our friends, because, you know, we spend a lot of time with them, you know, who knows what their feelings are on the inside, and you know, if they wanted to, you know, report me to local police, you know, these local police, you know, theoretically, if you go by the wording in the agreement, you could walk right onto the military base and find me and pick me up and carry me into downtown Baghdad and throw me in jail. Yikes. I don't even like talking about that. I just am concerned for your safety. That's what I'm, like, worried. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, 
like I said, I'm giving you the nuts and bolts of it. Like,